Greetings, everyone. Greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining us on our 11th episode here at R. Kelly Appeal TV. We're so grateful that you are still hanging in there with us and happy new year, happy new beginnings. And you know, 2022 is all about you. And in 22 being about you, we here would like to say, we wish you happiness, abundance, and peace. Um, so know this, please know that life can be whatever you want to make it. So we're going to get started right on today's segment. I'm very excited about the number 11 because that is a um, higher vibrational number. It is a number that is master teacher. It is the wisdom that is found within the lessons that we are growing to know. And in this case, Robert Sylvester Kelly, aka R. Kelly, is growing profoundly. No matter if we hear what's going on with him at verbatim, where he's at, he's learning, he's growing, he's moving. And, you know, May 4th, 2022 is going to have some valuable energy concepts to it, flow of vibration that's going to push him into his, uh, you know, 60 year cycle. Let's say it like that. For those who study astrology and who study the moon phase and planetary alignment, they know that Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn. Okay. It's the planetary ruler of Capricorn. And during this time, the, the goat is going to be profoundly moved by knowledge. And this comes a time where in our lives, we recognize who was good for us and who wasn't, what mistakes we made in life and what we should have done differently. And this is where he's at. So I want to talk about that. I want to also discuss the battle of the Kings. I don't know if anyone, if I'm sure everyone has seen the interview with Gail King and Sylvester Kelly. Um, we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to give some basic conversational points I found very interesting today. So as we're moving into balancing knowledge, wisdom, and alignment with physical truth, we're going to have some emotional times when dealing with the concepts of what's going on in the R. Kelly, um, Robert Sylvester Kelly, uh, um, sentencing. This day is going to be very profound. It's going to have some aggression in the air. It's going to be tough and strong. And then you're going to have some planetary awakenings of the dawn of Aquarius. It's going to be the energy of new profound vibration. Things that have never taken place before will then become self-evident to a society. And so that's why I believe um, the energy had everyone looking at R. Kelly. So it had to be done this way so the universe can show us or the higher powers or higher beings or higher energy or God-like nature could show us um, it's, it's awakening in action. So that was good. Um, it's, it's going to be sudden changes, innovative breakthroughs, restrictions are going to be, um, pulled off of, you know, concepts and ideas. I believe he has a chance during this day, um, because dates are very important. And when we create dates, especially in the criminal justice system, we understand what is vibing on that date. OK, it's something universal that is taking place. Um, we're going to have some emotional offsets that's going to be taking place that day where, you know, um, the love and the vibration of the love that we show as a collective is going to be universally um, maneuvered to help move forth what we as a society feels Robert Sylvester Kelly deserves as well as, of course, his energy, what he's putting into his belief, you know, because you think it, so it becomes. So this is very, very vital in the way that he needs to vibrate um, during this time as he's growing from now until May 4th, because that's going to be another significant factor. 
So for those who find this information hard to understand, you're not alone. I have been studying planetary alignment placements during the moon cycles since 2006, and it has been very challenging, very, very um, hard to understand. So just know that there will be great a great deal of emotion on that day. So you have Venus square and the moon. You have um, Uranus hitting hard hitting uh saturn and 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 vibing with the planetary alignments of cancer and the um venus venus is going to be moving very very um spontaneous on that day so mm, 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 mm. know that the energy of transformation growth compassion will be fighting the powers that wish to keep the world controlled by aggression fight and flight or the concept of just control, narcissistic control, the powers that be want to scare people into fearing things and there's no need to fear. So as long as we believe and know, as long as R. Kelly recognizes that he believes and know what is true in his life, things will become very, very valuable to him. Um, the R. Kelly sentencing day is noted and please keep your thoughts as positive and open as you can to heal the world circumstances the best way we can to cause for a just and right divine order f sentencing to where he's not given um, any time, hopefully. Uh, hopefully he'll say time, they say time served because the laws were totally emotional it was out of control everything was done illogically and so hopefully he's going to persevere this day um and then i also feel that you know the powers that come from sharing changes in life can help us see that you know everybody's day will be that day and what we do with that day and that energy we push out through meditation, through belief in ourselves, through the, the just the physical belief that we are innocent should be able to push us and catapult us into the alignment of where it is we're trying to go. But if we have doubt, if we have guilt, if we have remorse, if we have pain, if we have... Um, the area of not believing we deserve this, it'll go that way as well. The, the universal balance is tilting and it's based upon what we believe, both as a collective and as an individual. So number two, now after I spoke with a few individuals about R. Kelly, there was one conversation I had in particular that stood out to me and it was a question I'd never thought about. Did I feel the Gail King interview was a setup? And I'm going to share some of my conversational pieces that I had with individuals about this. And I want to know what you think in the comments below. So please feel free to leave some information. So after doing some research, it was noted how the interview was created with hopes of R. Kelly getting some public support because he had all these negative vibes, conversations, different things coming at him all of a sudden. And so he wanted to kind of clear the air. And it was after, I believe, the child support. No, it wasn't. I don't think it was. The interview came right before the child support inter or child support pickup. And he was talking about how he was trying to go to the bank. He couldn't get into his bank account. So he wanted to close an account and start another account. And he had never been to the bank before looking at any of his information. So when Gail King started asking him about why he couldn't even pay child support and he had over 300 and some thousand dollars in the bank and the bond was set at $160,000 or somewhere around there. Um, mm, that started tapping into an idea of did the child support situation create 
the incarceration from the beginning that was probably very devastating to Robert Sylvester Kelly by walking his dog and being picked up and charged not only with child support, allegations of sex crimes, airing nationally, like at a quick, quick national level, and then sharing it globally, probably, the world was going to know what was taking place. So it was as though the interview ignited an opening of understanding and information about Sylvester Kelly, Robert Sylvester Kelly, for the sake that everyone would have all eyes on him. That's what it looked like. So the interview, was it a setup? I'm not sure, but all I know is that it was very, it was very ironic how everything happened so very abruptly, so fast. Maybe he was a threat at the time. I don't know what was going on in his life because he had finally uh, probably awakened to the fact that this stuff was going on. People were talking about him. He didn't know what to do. And I believe that this is what created that chaos at that moment. Also, there's no irony behind the fact that his bond was revoked and he was not able to go out to hire an attorney. So he had to deal with the people who came to him to become his attorney, which would be the Greenberg guy, which would be, you know, the individuals who were at the very onset of the situation. They said that he was a flight risk. Well, how could you be a flight risk if the whole world knows that you're more or less in trouble? They're not gonna, you know, <laughs> the whole world is not gonna just turn their head and say, oh, he's R. Kelly. I don't see him right now, even though the world is looking for him if he chose not to appear in court, okay? It's just really, really weird. Maybe he was a threat at the time. Um, to be taken into custody and then caught in that jail trap for two years because of a pandemic because of a, a worldwide, uh, national, global situation, pandemic, that has to be devastating enough to cause a person to become emotionally ill and unable to even handle the abrupt changes that has took place, like being, quote, unhinged, unquote. Who the king of media, Gail King, and the king of R&B, Robert Sylvester Kelly, a.k.a. R. Kelly. They had a face-off in an interview about morality, about what was going down on national TV. That was a battle of words and a battle of emotion. R. Kelly was trying to clear his name so that others would know what was going on. Well, the powers that be made it look as though he was totally guilty. And this is where we must be so mindful when we are accusing people of things that are being done, when we are blaming people, we need to hold everyone accountable. The victim, the perpetrator, because all we have to do is when we are abused, make a notation and go see the doctor so that it can be corrected. And it would be very wise and important that if you were abused, misused, neglected, or in some way, you know, treated um, abusively, someone needed to have known this. It, that's it. And that's what we need to stand up to a mirror. Oh, if you don't act immediately and go through with the abusive situation, you should not be able to report because there's no way. There's so many abusive relationships that women and men both, they go back to them and then they file charges of domestic abuse and then they withdraw them. Because of fear, no. We're living in a world where you have too many people that 
can sit and look at the situation. If you go to a hospital and you're abused, they're not going to just say you're not abused. They're going to help you stand and document the event for you to take to court. So I believe that that needs to be done. Um, it was a battle of words and emotion, but Gail King was the one who had the advantage. The king of media had the advantage because she was facing off with someone who was already judged before he got to sit in the chair. So she, when she asked him the questions, it was very emotional for Robert Sylvester Kelly. So why would she title the interview Unhinged? So when I looked up the word unhinged, it is defined as an unsettled, highly disturbed, unstable, distraught individual. Wouldn't you be? I get, I guarantee you if the king of media was in a seat where the king of R&B was sitting, she would probably have felt the same way and become as unhinged as she said on CNN and ABC and NBC. Okay. Gail King herself is a black woman in America who has made a life doing interviews. I'm sure she can truly understand what Robert Sylvester Kelly was going through in the King face-off. She is the king of media and R. Kelly is the king of R&B. That was very ironic. That's what, I, that's what I came up with when I was going through my research this week. I hope no one finds this to be an unhinged conversation. The point I'm taking home with this is that it could very well have been a setup. If you were to look at timing, sequence of events, and the fact that R. Kelly has been treated so severely inhumane since the interview, he was picked up the very next day, held in confinement, and treated totally inhumane. Not given its due process during a pandemic, it was just very ironic to me. So please, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I, how I feel about this at this moment. I know that May 4th, 2022 is going to be the sentencing and I can't wait. It's just like a football game, like a basketball game, like a, p a political event, like a religious study. It's something I am looking for. There's something I'm looking for. I don't know what it is yet, but I know that I'm going to see it when it happens. And by keeping the R. Kelly Appeal TV alive, I think we can, we, we can find this situation out together. Please know that we are keeping a close eye on what is taking place relative to the process and appeal information. So we will keep you posted. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment to this channel because we are here every Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, for episodes that's generated around Robert Sylvester Kelly's appeal, emotional research, and the comments that his fans are saying about him. So far, all the conversations and comments have been positive, and I thank you, thank you for that. Um, happy New Beginnings. Thank you for being here, and as always, keep it 100, and we'll see you next time.